Good afternoon and welcome to this, the launch of our AYA season of giving and our day of service. This is really exciting for us because the AYA has now entered the digital age. For all of you social networking gurus out there, this may be uh, mundane, but for us here, this is an event as we come closer to the 21st century. So this is an exciting opportunity for us. I'm here with Lisa Chapman, the national chair of our day of service, and with Elisa Masterson, our staff person who is supporting all of you. And I want to give a big shout out to Darcy, Jelani, Scott, Mike, Sarah, all of you. Out are you out there? We don't know how many are tuning into this. I can only guess. This is uh, uh, an important occasion for us because uh, not only are we taking the opportunity to give a shout out to all of you that would participate in this day of service, but we'd like to get your feedback. We'd like to know what ideas you have, what we can do to better improve this opportunity for our alumni to serve. You know, there hasn't been an activity in the past six years of all of our new AY initiatives that has drawn as many young alumni, that have drawn as many of our alumni from our graduate and professional schools to this family that we call the AYA. It's entirely encouraging and inspiring that so many new alumni would come together in all of these opportunities that are staged around the world to give back to our communities. We thought a lot in the past two years about our success metrics here at the AYA and what makes this place work. And when I'm on the road, I often ask our Yale clubs, what is your success metric? And they will often come back to me and say, well, it's the number of events that we stage, or perhaps it's the number of volunteers or participants that come to our events, or maybe, and I grind my nails on the chalkboard, it's the number of dues-paying members that we have. And while those might be important measures of what it is that we do, they're inputs after all, they're not outputs, the real success metric might be this. If Yale's mission is to educate and train world leaders, then wouldn't the success metric for any local Yale club be how are our communities changed? How are our communities better because Yale world leaders live there? And while we might express that in many different ways through our activities where we invite faculty members out to Yale clubs, where we uh, have social gatherings around important events in the life of this university, after all, I think the real measurement is how do we as alumni influence the communities around us and in so doing give back to the communities that served us and nurtured us so well. You know, Yale's mission as defined in its charter of 1701 was to instruct youth in service to church and state. This tradition of service is part of our DNA. It's a very important part of who we are and how we would define our alumni community to the rest of the world. And you know, every school child, I think, knows the famous words of Nathan Hale, who said, I have but one life to lose for my country. But I am convinced that his more powerful words are carved on the base of Harkness Tower, right above the Trumbull Room in the Brantford Courtyard. And those, are, those words are, I wish to be useful. If you read the whole quote, it's all about giving back and that any service to society that would be so useful would be noble. I think it is in that tradition that we launch again another day of service. I might add days of service. We're often asked, how can we change the world in one day? Often asked by our Ivy League peers who are trying to convince us that one day might not be enough. But I would remind them that it is days of service. And we have so many clubs, shared interest groups, and even our Yale College classes that engage in service projects throughout the year. This one particular day of service gives us a chance to rally the troops provide an opportunity to focus on what is really important to us and to focus on what values we might want to convey from one generation to the next because of who we are as an alumni group. Well, one of those values is the fact that these programs are volunteer driven and managed. Uh, I can say honestly that the groundswell of support, the inspiration from these programs came from volunteers. And I I can't think of a more enthusiastic volunteer, actually, than the woman sitting next to me, Lisa Chapman, class of 81 at the School of Management. Um, <clears throat> I don't know where your pom-poms are and uh, where the cheerleading outfit is, but I think we should design one for the day of service <laughs> because you are truly an ambassador and someone, I think, uh, who not only uh, is enthusiastic and excited and passionate about these programs, but you live this. 
And I've seen that through all of your participation, not only in the day of service, but on the AOA Board of Governors, in your participation with our Alumni Service Corps, and all the other projects. So I would like to introduce you to our star volunteer, Lisa Chapman. Mark, thank you so much. Um, and I'm very honored and touched by your kind words. But it's not about me. I'm just the alumni volunteer chair. It's really about the people we serve. And I'm glad to be in this position and honored to be, to be the chair for, the, uh, for this year. Uh, Lisa, you're not running for office. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I want to talk about the day of service opportunity. And what the day of service program is, is for all Yale alumni, family, and friends around the globe to make a difference in their communities where they live and work. It could be helping veterans uh, re-enter the workforce. It could be helping children with mentoring or career opportunities, or even cleaning a park. All these little pieces make a huge difference where we live and work in our communities. And you know, people ask me, they often ask me, Lisa, why do you serve? Why do you do this? And I have to tell you, to be honest, I'm so inspired by the people I've met over the last four years being involved with the Day of Service program, from being a site coordinator in New Jersey, to regional director in New Jersey, and now the, the, to the chair. Um, the Yale members, the people who work in the sites, the Yale alumni leaders, I've met through all the various uh, worlds that the Yale leaders um, are busy in, um, have inspired me. But really, what's really truly inspired me are the people we serve. When you're working with people who've had incredible challenges in their lives, who share their stories with you. You're working hand in hand with them and you're sharing their sense of joy. That's what truly inspires me. And I can't say enough about the opportunities you have given me at the AYA to be of service to Yale and to the communities at large. Um, I wanna say for the program, uh, we, we need your participation out there. Everybody who's tuning in now and on the, on the video uh, feedbacks on the posted on our day of service, Yale Day of Service website, on Facebook, on Twitter, which you'll see all this. We need your participation. We need your impact. And we have tools to help you do that. We have projects in a box, how to create a day of service project. We have tools, how to use social media, how to make a video. It's all there for you to use. And I want to highlight, we have, our date is Monday, is Saturday, May 10th, 2014. Come join us, the Yale Day of Service. And you can like us on our Yale Day of Service page, Facebook page. You connect to us through our Twitter, Yale Day Service. And you can also post any photos from Day of Service on Instagram, Yale Day of Service. So please join us. We need you, and we want to make a difference to 2014. Thank you, Mark. Post, post, post. Get the pictures out there. Get the tweets out there. Let everybody know what you're doing. Uh, while our programs are volunteer driven, uh, I have to add that it is a wonderful partnership with the AOA staff and that we uh, help manage these programs to the best of our ability and to the, the best of our resources. And uh, I'd like to introduce Elisa Masterson, who's been with uh, the AOA. How, how many years have you been at the AOA? 23. 23 years, and you worked in the class group, you worked in the club group, maybe not the class group. No, I did, yeah. You did, yeah. you worked mm -hmm. in the club group. Yeah. And now, 22 years later, you come to this day of service, and um, I am thankful for the passion and the excitement that you bring to this from the staff perspective. Uh, I mean, I really, it, it's, it's fun to see staff get as excited as our volunteers in these wonderful projects. And you're going to share with us some of the how-tos and the logistics of sure. the day service. Uh, I am very excited about working with this program. It's one of the few programs that we have at the AYA that really crosses all different areas of AYA work. We work with clubs and classes, with shared interest groups. There are amazing partnerships that come together when the Yale women work with the Yale Club of Chicago, work with the Yale Latino Alumni Association for a really empowering site. There's a lot of great opportunities for our alumni groups to work together and create these great service opportunities. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention in terms of logistics, while our date is May 10th, uh, we do have a lot of flexibility. There are dates, other dates that might work better for your community or a community that you're working in, and we're very happy to have other service dates for projects around the day of service. We'll still take care of listing them and um, registering people for those sites. So if you're wondering, many of you on this broadcast, I think, have been involved with the Day of Service as site coordinators. Some of you have been participants. Some of you may want to be site coordinators. And as Lisa referenced, there are lots of resources available. And the first thing I want to point you to is our newly redesigned website, www.yaledayofservice.org. 
It's been totally overhauled. It's a much better experience to tell the stories of the Day of Service. You'll see all our previous videos there. You can find photos of Day of Service sites. It is not yet live for registration because our sites are not live. We'll talk about the timeline in just a moment. But there is something at the top you can click on the organizer's toolbox. And in the toolbox are a variety of resources from a timeline to how-tos that Lisa was referencing, sample communication, sample materials. So there are many resources there to help folks who want to organize a Day of Service site. In addition, Lisa herself and myself as staff are always available to help folks. In, and also this amazing network of regional directors that we have. On the Contact Us page, you'll see a listing of all the regional directors. The country, the world actually, has been broken into various sections. And there's a leader volunteer who's there, can help be a resource for you in many ways to create day of service sites. So where we are in the timeline right now is we have just uh, relaunched this new Day of Service website. There'll be an email going out to all alumni for whom we have email addresses on Thursday or Friday of this week, drawing people to the website and announcing the date so people can get it on their calendars nice and early, the May 10th date. Um, and in addition, at that point, we'll be opening the site collection process. So for the next month, we'll be collecting information on sites. We'll be processing them in the database that's behind the Day of Service website. And then in early March, we'll send another email to all alumni announcing that we're going live and that registration is open. And at that point, floods of people will start registering for the Day of Service and we'll have amazing, successful program once again. Our goal, many of you know that we have hit a bit of a plateau. We have about 3,500 people who participate every year. But this year, we're really looking to push it out and get to 5,000 5, volunteers. And we want your help to do that. So if you're watching this broadcast and you're interested in getting involved, more involved than you've been, please take a moment to go to the website, reach out to any of us, and we'll be here to help you. I also want to invite you to go ahead uh, and submit questions to us. Mark and Lisa and I will shortly be taking some questions. There's an address, a Gmail account address that's on your screen. If you want to email those questions, we'll be able to take them live here very shortly. Um, but I just want to take a moment to thank all of you because your involvement in this program is what makes it work. And the fact that you're here watching today lets us know that you are as committed to this program as we are. And we feel very fortunate that Yale alumni are willing to give back and to really make a difference where they live. Lisa, you mentioned something at the start of your comments that I want to underscore. Um, I think uh, people need to realize that we are not an alumni association. We are an association mm -hmm. of associations. We are a community of communities. We are 75 Yale College classes. We are 187 regional Yale clubs. We are more than 100, almost 150 shared interest groups. Tell me just briefly, the kind of projects that work best um, are those where these groups collaborate with each other and partner on specific projects, that they don't have to feel that they have to own individual projects, but they can work together. Can you describe some of the sites that work sure. best? I'd be glad to do that, Mark. Um, what's wonderful is we have tremendous collaboration, starting with the clubs. We have clubs working with alumni. We have shared interest groups. We have groups of uh, alumni in different parts of the country um, who actually work together. So what, for example, this last project I worked on was in Belmar, New Jersey, which was a town hard hit by Hurricane Sandy. It was co-sponsored by, co by many of the uh, shared interest groups, Yale Women, uh, the Yale uh, Hispanic group, the Black America, um, Black American uh, Yale Alumni Association, uh, numerous clubs, and they all got together. We had 45 people in Belmar, New Jersey, Jersey tutoring and mentoring young Hispanic children. We also had uh, a heavy population of uh, Hispanic parents, and our alumni group broke off and helped the parents in our educational system. So that's just one example. You know, when you're working with a child and you see a smile on their face and you just, you just melt as a volunteer, just right then and there. And that's why we all want to serve and, and come back again and again every year. But throughout the country, in Chicago, they work with the refugees. In San Francisco, they work in Chinatown. Uh, we work with collaborations with all sorts of community groups as well as Yale groups. And I think what's great about the program is we're all getting out of our comfort zones. We're all doing things we've never done before with people we've never met. And you go into one, any of these day of service projects, and I inspire all of you out there listening to step up. And if you've never been on a site or you haven't coordinated one, it's a blast. And you, you find yourself doing things beyond your wildest dreams mm -hmm. for others. And it's in collaboration and working as a team. So while we blast emails here advertising the day of service, um, I, uh, I, I wanted to also mention that the power of this communication often rests within these various networks, these alumni associations, to communicate it on their own. Mm -hmm. So that if there's a collaboration with the Yale Women and the Yale Club of Princeton and the Yale Black Alumni Association or the Yale Alumni Chorus, they can all pump the word out to their individual networks. Mm -hmm. So the power of that communication and, 
the overlapping message is what drives many people to the site. If I wanted to be a site leader, what do I do? How do I get started? So the first thing that I would do is get in touch with um, your local club president, uh, find out if there's already a club coordinator for your club or your regional director, uh, and then go to the website uh, and go to the organizer's toolbox. It gives you the timeline, it gives you all the resources that are available. Um, the, the other big piece of it, of course, is finding a partner organization to work with where you want to do your service site. Now, in many cases, our alumni are on boards of organizations. They've uh, been involved with organizations in the past. Sometimes they've heard about their organizations in the local paper. If you need suggestions, we also have site selection uh, um, suggestions on the website in the organizer's toolbox. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many ways uh, to get involved. I might also suggest that uh, we, we don't normally lack for ideas of where we mm -hmm. can serve. I think if you're going to be a site leader, uh, we hope that you have friends, family, uh, Yale colleagues in the area that you might bring to the project mm -hmm. as well. I mean, we're counting on you to build attendance and to build uh, a team around these particular project sites. Uh, we're not lacking for where to go and how we might serve. Uh, what we really want to do is get the word out to other Yale alumni so that they might want to show up. At the yeah, same I would just like to add, Mark, that the best, the best projects are run by those people with the strongest passions. Mm -hmm. People are driven to make a difference. It's what they believe in. It's what they see in their local neighborhoods. It could be cleaning up a park. It could be, it could be working in a soup kitchen. It could be uh, helping with a clothing drive. It's whatever makes them want to work and make a difference. And that, their enthusiasm and their engagement is volumes. So let me ask you this. Is this only about Yale alumni? What if I want to invite another university group, or what if I want to invite other community partners? We definitely, we definitely encourage that. Um, we, if Yale can be a catalyst for bringing more people in to make changes in their local communities, all the better. So we absolutely reach out when we do partnerships. And the other thing that I think I want to mention that we find it's very important is the Yale Davis Service is a great way to share these values with your family. So your children, your grandchildren, it's a wonderful opportunity for alumni to work side by side with other alumni, other alumni families. Our environmental projects tend to be great opportunities for alumni to come together with their kids to share these values and to have a good time together making a difference. Yeah. I, it, it, it can't go without mentioning that uh, this has developed into one of our strongest family programs. Mm -hmm. um, I'm amazed, for example, at the Alumni Service Corps that of the 175 people we sent to Ghana, Africa last year, over 30 were children aged between mm -hmm. 10 and 17. I, it is a real occasion for families to discuss what really matters in life. What are the values that we would wish to convey through an institution like mm -hmm. Yale and how we would convey those to the communities around us. It's, it's an extraordinary opportunity. Yeah, what's exciting also is a every year a third of our participants are brand new. So these are Yale alumni who, for various reasons, um, weren't able to participate and come back to Yale and come back to alumni engagement through the Day of Service program. And what, I, what I've seen over four years is remarkable. Someone may start once with a park or a river or some cleanup site, and then they progressively get larger and larger into very large, meaningful um, and important Habitat for Humanity, uh, or the Art Project in Harlem, uh, the music groups. They're, they're, they, beyond, they go beyond by the, day, by the weekly and the experience they have. They also become sustainable programs. Many of the day of service programs are not just the one day, but they become monthly or they become weekly or they become whatever is inspired by the and, leaders. And that would be part of our goal here, right? Absolutely. We don't want to be one-off opportunities. Absolutely. We hope that these one-day projects might develop right. into monthly projects exactly. or even weekly projects. Exactly. Um, and even national projects. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, we love the partnership idea. I mean, it's one thing to have a bunch of Yaleys show up. Right. It's another thing to have them actually partner with the organizations right. and roll up their sleeves and help uh, contribute to that organization through, uh, throughout the year. Um, I have another question that's come up on the screen. I hope you're all sending in questions. Uh, wow, the great. name uh, from, I can't read the name. Rob Greenlee from Boston. Greenlee. Oh, Rob Greenlee from Boston. Hey, Rob. hey Rob, how are you? Rob's our yeah. Yale Club yeah. president in, the, in, in Yale Boston. Yeah. When can we send out the website link to our club members? So the, the um, actual broadcast email is going to be going out in the next couple days, but you should feel free. You can give them mm -hmm. advance notice. It's live. It's right. ready to go. Send it now. Right. Right. <laughs> And, I'd like and to, send it often. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd like to add, we are very active on the Yale Day of Service Facebook page. We're very active on Twitter and now Instagram and probably some other social media outlets. So watch us, like us on Facebook, respond. You can post your own messages, your own photos. We want to hear from you. Talk, we, we have a Facebook page. Yes. yes. 
and who can post on that? Uh, Anybody what can, can they post. Find? Anybody can post on it. We want we want participants to post. Last year we had many many people post their photographs and comments about their own ex personal experiences. Okay, so of a to alumni of a certain age, I, I won't make a hazard guess as to what that age threshold <laughs> might be. How do you find this Facebook page? Okay, you go to facebook.com and you type in Yale Day of Service and it pops up. That's all you have to do. It's that simple. And you can contribute right there. You can You're sign right. up. And what we want to hear, we want to hear your stories. No, oh, we, we want, want you to like it, right? Well, we want people to like it. Once they like it, then it becomes part of their automatic news feed. Um, but you go on and you post your own story and, and what you did last year and your day of service project and what it meant to you and maybe a photograph or two. And that's also a new feature of our, new, our redesigned day of service website. Uh, there is a share your experience link where you can go on, you can upload photos, again, share your thoughts and your experiences and we'll be able to share those on the website. So if you go now, there's a great photo gallery of, site, of pictures from last year which we hadn't really had a medium for showing, uh, and so that's a great opportunity. Facebook is fabulous, mm -hmm. but as it, it's sort of chronological, so this way we can aggregate all of the experiences and have them available. Alisa, tell us what's in the toolbox for site coordinators. What can they expect to find there? So the toolbox starts from very basic things like a timeline, and it goes uh, further and includes all kinds of sample communications. It includes how to look for a site. It includes how to post your site. It includes how to promote your site, how to communicate with your club president, how to communicate with local alumni, uh, it, it, all the way down to appreciation certificates that you can give to the organization that you partnered with and the alumni who participated. So there's a whole variety of things. How to use social media, step-by-step -step guide that Lisa worked with our new um, social media at Yale organization, SAY, uh, Social at Yale, to create. Um, there, how to do a video. So there's all kinds of information there that really would, should give you everything you need. And if there's something that's missing, let us know. And we'll, mm -hmm. if you're asking the question, probably someone else has it too, and we'll be sure to get it up there. I, I'd like to also uh, suggest that the videos and the pictures that you may take are not only important for communicating the message uh, to others as a thank you immediate after the day of service or even advertising for the next day or the continuing aspect of the program, but we also use these videos to inspire alumni uh, at large during our AWA assembly every November. Mm -hmm. So if you have an inspirational piece, please share it with us because we will work this into our materials to share throughout the year, not just immediately after the, that day of service. Right. Um, Mark, I'd like to add one important part about this. Social media, we want everybody to be engaged in social media not just me as chair or the regional director or the site coordinator, anybody who goes on the day of service sites, they can put, put, post a comment or post a photograph. Mm -hmm. It's really, everybody has a role here. It's not a top-down leadership. Really, the world is flat here, and we're all contributing what we can, and we want to hear from everyone who participates, even from a child. We had, we had children in one of, our, one of our sites in California, and the children were doing the photographs, were taking the photographs and posting them. So we might have had somebody that just joined us. I have a question here. Does my project have to happen on May 10th? No. It can happen any time that works for you and the nonprofit or the agency or the, the park or wherever you're working with. It's up to you to figure out what the best timing is. We have often have projects on Sundays. We have them during the week. Um, in New Jersey, we had a project which sponsored a uh, multi-world uh, language competition. It was on a Monday, Monday. But I think, I think it's a great opportunity for people to really open their perspectives about when they can do these sites. Though I also think that there is some sense of um, some sense of real participation when everyone realizes all around the world on that day, somewhere there are people doing community right. service in the name of Yale. So we absolutely encourage people to do it any day they want, but also we'd love to have those sites on the 10th as well. Lisa, tell us some of the places outside the U.S. where they've had significant days of service. Sure, so um, we have a great site in Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, the, in China. The, in, what are we doing in Nigeria? Do you know? Uh, well, I'm not sure if Olabesi, who's the person who's there, is doing the same project this year, but it's been a, a outreach, a women's outreach. Um, we have Beijing. Um, we have Puerto Rico. We have. Um, oh, I know Ghana. The Yale Club there. The Yale Club of go Ghana to is going to be doing one this year. Yep. And, service Corps. And our international regional directors are working really hard to develop some new sites. The Yale Club of Switzerland does an amazing mm -hmm. job. Um, the Yale Club of England did a really incredible mentoring program mm -hmm. last year with high school students. Um, th there's all kinds of really amazing things happening and around Turkey. the world. Turkey, we've had some. Turkey, we've had the last year's December. project with Turkey. We paired with, uh, partnered with one of the World Fellows, one her organization, and uh, the service project was done through through her organization. So that's another great partnership with our our World Fellow leaders around the country, around the world. So why do you think Yaleys come back every year? 
to participate in this program? Oh, I I you do it once, you, you have to come back. There's no, there's, there's no no here. Once you, once you go on any of these sites throughout, throughout the world and you work with Yaley's Hand in Hand and other community groups and other co-sponsors, working with people who benefit. It could be painting a building, working on art projects, doing movies, uh, making food, whatever it is. You are so touched by the experience personally. It's incredibly fun. It's incredibly exhilarating. And you want to do it again. And again and again. <laughs> and, again and that's again, what we again, want. Again, again. Well, you know, it's only one day, but it's really a beginning. And mm -hmm. these projects have then become lifelong passions for people. Yeah. And I think it's, it's also incumbent upon our site coordinators to ensure that all of our volunteers have a meaningful experience mm -hmm. and a good time there. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to think that we could always rely on our volunteer partners mm -hmm. uh, to provide the kind of program services that uh, our alumni would find to be uh, a meaningful use of their time, but sometimes our site coordinators have to fill in and mm -hmm. they have to be the leaders that we all know they are to make sure that alumni have a great experience and will come back um, year after year. Um, so is there any advice for post Yale Day of Service activities? I mean, what happens when it's done here? What, what can we expect our regional directors, what can we expect our site coordinators to do after the Day of Service? Well, we hope that they'll do um, follow-up mm -hmm. with the participants mm -hmm. and thank them for their involvement. And ideally, Thanking is key. Yes, right. yes. Right. Thank them for their Make involvement. Make sure we yeah. can't thank people right. enough right. for their right. engagement here. Right. And ideally provide them an opportunity to continue to engage through service. Uh, another one of the new features of our Day of Service website is the opportunity for clubs to post ongoing opportunities for participation so that ones that aren't part of the Yale Day of Service brand that are not registered for through our website but are ongoing can be listed now. And so alumni who come to our website who are relocating or, or are interested in service can look and see what's going on uh, in their area. So we invite all of our clubs and our club presidents and our regional directors, people who are involved, to post. Uh, there's an online form that you fill out and we can post ongoing opportunities there on the website. If you have a really successful uh -huh. site, I would hope that you would go back to your Yale Club mm -hmm. board and say, hey, maybe we should continue right. this. And, and not just next year, but on a weekly or a monthly basis. And in fact, one of our overarching strategies here is to develop national partnerships. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we've made uh, some uh, forward progress with uh, uh, Big Brothers and mm -hmm. Sisters. Um, I know that we've looked at a number of other uh, partners, such as Habitat for Humanity mm -hmm. or uh, JA. So uh, put your thinking caps on and if you find yourself at a project site that is particularly exciting where the partnering organization is enthusiastically supportive of our volunteers mm -hmm. and the Yale family getting involved, think about how we may develop that into uh, not just a regional partnership but a mm -hmm. national partnership. I'm sorry. Yes? I was just going to add that you know we're often role models to people we don't even know. And what I found with the Day of Service program and for people to participate, the after, what they do next, is they, they're so inspired by their personal experience, they want to do more. They, they join the board of the nonprofit. They, they want to expand it during the monthly pro program. So it's very much getting the word out and the personal experience is the driver. Uh, often site coordinators then work within their local media. They write up their, their experience, so they share it locally and the word goes out. And Yale, you know, it's it's really not about Yale for Yale. It's Yale. It's Yale alumni getting together and sharing their experience and communicating to the world and being leaders. We have an email question from Peter Butterfield. Are your principal tools for increasing turnout the new site and social media, or are there other tools as well? Well, we always mm -hmm. have the uh, the main sort of blasts that come from New Haven uh, that go to all alumni. There are usually three or four during the cycle uh, of the Day of Service pro progress, um, and we will continue to do those. But as Mark alluded to earlier, we definitely rely on local communications, both from individuals and from clubs or other organizations. And now we do have this powerful new tool, social media. So we're not relying on any one thing. It's really multiple angles. People need to hear about it from different things. But the, really, one of the most important and most powerful ways to do it is for individuals to be those advocates, to be the ambassadors and say, hey, I'm doing this great thing. Why don't you come right. do it? I mean, we had one year we had a woman, it was her birthday, and she invited all of her friends as their birthday, her birthday celebration. They did a day of service project together, and then they went out to lunch. Yeah. Um, so there are lots of creative ways right. that we can bring folks together around the day of service and promote the day of service. And it's really, right. um, there are many channels for that. Well, and let me just add, um, what we do every week um, is we have a conference call with 30 regional directors around the world. Half an hour call. 
Uh, we're going to start for uh, two weeks um, and have it for a couple of weeks uh, and then break up and do it weekly as we get closer to the last couple of months for a day of service. But that is an opportunity for 30 regional directors to share stories, best practices, ideas, issues, concerns, opportunities, um, and that we do that on a regular basis. And that helps uh, really run the program. Sure, sure. So we're at the end of the half hour, and I'd like to leave everyone with this thought. Um, as you all know, uh, a significant milestone in the life of this university was the inauguration of Peter Salovey as president. And uh, I can say that uh, while we had uh, a fabulous economist in Rick Levin who propelled us into the next century with uh, an amazingly strong university, we now uh, rely on a cognitive psychologist to lead the way. And as someone in alumni relations, I can really appreciate the fact that uh, uh, Peter uh, wrote the book on emotional intelligence because what we do is connect with people emotionally through opportunities like this, the day of service. Uh, the corporation and Peter recently went through an exercise where they were trying to identify those values that are most important to us as a university community. And uh, if you read Peter's book, you would know that he talks a lot about joy and joyfulness. And that in the workplace, we don't often celebrate that as much as we do anger or power or uh, the kind of negative emotions that uh, force people to work rather than inspire them to work. And I can say this, uh, this day of service is one of our opportunities to celebrate joy. Um, I think uh, it's, it's uh, no mystery that people feel good about volunteering. And uh, this is an opportunity for us as a family to recognize that the most important thing that we can do is give back to the communities that, that gave to us. And this day of service uh, has become our opportunity to bring Yaleys together from all around the globe to celebrate joy. Thank you for participating today. I hope we provided you with some uh, insights. I hope we perhaps explained a few things that might not have been clear. And we look forward to periodic updates and keeping everybody inspired and up to date on day of service developments. Thank you, everybody.